this is the third attempt <laughs> at recording this video. Uh, it's a rough topic. It's close to home. And uh, I'll just get right into it. I'd like to talk about depression. Um, I wanted to do this topic a while ago, but I didn't because a few people in the moto vlogging community actually committed suicide over the last year. And I didn't want to come off as disingenuous, opportunistic, or anything like that because I'd never ridden with him, I didn't know him personally, and I really just felt like it would be disingenuous for me to talk about people that I just I didn't know. And um, I didn't want people to hear what I have to say and then just blow it off as me trying to cash in on somebody else's tragedy. So I just, I, I put it off. But um, I think now is probably an okay time to get into this. So I guess I'll start with my own perspective. I have, have had depression off and on over the years. But at this point, basically just don't really have depression in the form that I used to as a kid anymore because I've taken control of how I think and attend to the world around me. I'll get into that later and how I overcame depression. But splitting cards is kind of fun, so. When in California. So, when I was a kid in middle school and high school, going through puberty, um, when you're that age and you don't have a lot of education about psychology, depression itself, just really how to think, how to organize your thoughts, how to examine your inner monologue, what you're thinking at any given time, and work through it in a logical manner. And I'm not really going anywhere in particular, I'm just out of my lunch break, but... So, as a kid, my parents ran a foster home, foster group home. They were my bio parents, had four reels, um, parents since birth, biological parents, and uh, I've run, ran a foster home since before I think my brother was born. So we grew up in this situation where we've got up to 10 foster brothers vying for the attention of our own parents from a day-to-day -day basis, and, um, and uh, it, it was pretty damn depressing at times because you come home after school and you got 10 people in front of you trying to check in and, and do their stuff to take care of business because they're placed in the home for a reason but also because they want that one-on-one -on -one attention with an actual parental figure that they may have never had in their entire life so frequently I would just go up to my room and be an introvert unless I had to go to some practice or whatever. So, that went on through middle school, the early parts of, of high school, but it wasn't until, and, I, and I'd, I'd have bouts of depression where, I think, like most people with depression, you get to a certain point, if it's strong enough, that you feel so sick and exhausted and just drained and hopeless that you contemplate suicide. You don't necessarily get to a point where you'd actually go through with it, but it's on your brain and it's not a good thing. And I was there a few, I was there quite a few times. Never got to the point where I was actually gonna go through with anything, but you just, it's, it's one of those, like even if you were in pain or being tortured, physically by somebody, 
you'd probably be saying to yourself, Jesus, just make this end, kill me, put me out of my misery. And that's how severely depressed people feel. They honestly feel like such shit that they would rather be dead, or at least think that they would rather be dead, than uh, feel like they feel. And that's why a lot of people commit suicide when they get to that point. Uh, you know what, I'll go straight, because I don't really drive through there much. So, yeah, I was there from time to time in middle school and high school, and I, I, didn't ever, I never told anybody. I didn't really talk about it, never told my friends about it. Um, they may have asked, hey man, what's it like living in a foster home? Well, <laughs> shitty, um, but it also offered me opportunities that I wouldn't have otherwise had because my parents were making decent money. Um, they ran a really nice home showered the kids with with presents and stuff over the holidays and birthdays and bought them uh, really really nice clothes and really took care of the kids really well better than their parents did most of the time but um it offered me some opportunities that i probably wouldn't have had otherwise and i, I learned a lot of stuff that most kids don't find out about until college and that's that was with a major downside I also learned about the horrors of the world at a very young age I mean before I even entered middle school I knew about rape physical abuse um, torture basically all the horrors you could imagine that people would do as war crimes these parents or friends of the family or siblings had done to these kids and it was pretty horrific now, I didn't hear about detail stuff until I was in high school, but I got an inkling of the kinds of trauma. Um, and the only reason my parents, I think, told me about some of this stuff was so that I could have some empathy, because I would get pissed having to vie for my parents' attention over these kids. And um, when they'd tell me, hey, this kid is pretty messed up and they need a lot of help, and that's why they're here, then I'd be like, okay, I get it, yeah. And it still felt shitty, but I could at least empathize. So that's what I was going through in middle school and high school. And um, when I finally, when I got into high school, that's when my dad started kind of nudging me in the direction of psychology sociology, cultural anthropology, like all the things that I sometimes talk about in my vlogs. But um, most of all, philosophy. And what really got me into philosophy was Stoicism. And in particular, uh, the book that my dad had me read was The Enchiridion by Epictetus. Now, <laughs> he'll, he'll probably be pretty psyched that I'm telling people about that book because it is amazing and honestly that book in particular is what probably saved my life um, just thinking <laughs> thinking back on the shit that I was going through in high school and college mentally that book alone well combined with him having me go through B.F. Skinner programmed instruction book and learning about cognitive behavioral psych those two books Psych and philosophy are honestly, I think, what saved my life and continue to make me the, uh, the stoic that I am today and able to deal with <laughs> just flat out messed up trauma that many other people would crumble into themselves and uh, not be able to deal with. like seeing a friend ripped into three pieces in a ditch having gone under a pickup truck at probably 100 miles per hour that was a pretty messed up day but because because of uh, because of what I was taught and what my dad handed down to me in those books I've been able to deal with that kind of trauma in a really healthy way and not let it take over my mind. Now, 
understand that part of that is being able to effectively use meditation and um, other things to control the physical manifestations of depression. But, see, when I say depression, I mean just like the feeling, that sunk, sinking feeling in your gut, that stranglehold around your throat, the physical feelings that you get when you're at your absolute saddest. Uh, I can actually, when I feel that coming on, just stop it, choke it out, and walk away. There are a lot of people who have no idea how to do that. They, they're controlled by their emotions, they're controlled by their depression, and it just washes over them and screws with their mind. And um, that's why anybody that I hear is going through depression, that's the first book, is the Epic uh, Enchiridion by Epictetus, that I tell them they need to read like immediately because it will reshape their brain and really put the world into perspective. Like the, the penultimate example of that book is if you have a favorite coffee mug, you go to work every day, you love, let's say you love drinking tea or coffee, and you've got this favorite mug that you got signed at say like Comic-Con or you went to your favorite sports team and had them sign your, your sports team label uh, mug that's like the official NFL, NBA, whatever, rattle it off. And it's this really special mug. It means a lot to you. It's your absolute favorite. And one day you're washing it, you go to dry it off with a towel, and it slips out of your hands and shatters on the floor. You're sitting there looking at your mug, and you can do one of two things. You can either have a complete freak out and go, oh my god, my most cherished thing in the world is gone. Oh, and turn into a blubbering idiot. Or you can do what the Enchiridion suggests, which is look at, examine it. I mean, it's, it's, Stoicism is kind of, the, is definitely the precursor for the scientific method and empiricism. What Stoicism would say, and the Enchiridion would say is, look at this cup. What are the properties of a cup? Okay, hold water and it's fragile and can break. It's made out of ceramics. I mean, hell, if it drops on the ground, it's probably going to shatter. Well, you know what? Shit happens. Sometimes it shatters. Do not... Um, that's weird. Do not attach your emotions and pin your hopes on the existence of this just physical object um, that could possibly break. Now, you could extrapolate that to human relationships, and for the most part, it would still apply. You don't want to become a shell of a human being because any one person in your life dies. The nature of a human being is that they could possibly die. If my son were to die, that, that would really, really, really be rough. But I'd be able to get through it because I know how to reshape and return my thinking to find a way to be okay with it. Now that doesn't mean I wouldn't do anything in response to how he died, like start a movement, start a cancer charity or whatever. I'm not saying he's got cancer. I'm just saying if, if he happened to die one of one thing or another, I would do everything in my power to push that negative energy and turn it into a positive. So that's, that's stoicism. It's, it's kind of like a martial art, except it's control over your emotions and reshaping the way that you think so that you are like an iron fist to the world. Like things just wash over you and you remain. So that's my best advice for people who are depressed. And honestly, what saved my life from a downward spiral of depression. Like, I've, I've lived with sleep apnea since middle school, and I think that's part of what contributed to my negative thoughts and depression and introversion, because I was always just tired, just felt exhausted, was never getting good sleep. And um, I 
and that adds up over time, man. I mean, <laughs> the only upside to having sleep apnea for this long is that now that I've got a son and he has horrible sleep and wakes us up throughout the night, I'm better equipped to deal with it because I'm used to it than my wife. But I, I shudder to think of how many people with sleep apnea also have clinical depression that's going untreated and could possibly harm themselves or others at some point. So, yeah, and the other thing is if anybody ever comes to you with um, thoughts of suicide or just feeling depressed, then um, take it seriously. I gotta go through here because that gate is not wide enough. My uncle, uh, one of my uncles, before I was born, actually killed himself while he was in college because he he was super depressed. And he actually went to people and was saying, hey man, I'm feeling really depressed. Having issues with his girlfriend. And um, was at a point, I think, where he was contemplating suicide and he didn't get the help that he needed. Well, sure enough, he ended up shooting himself in his car. He was going to OSU at the time. He was a very, very talented artist to the point that OSU actually wanted to put his art on display on their campus as like a regular piece, a bunch of his sculpture. So when I think about that loss, it just, I, I break down. That's why I had to read his video a few times because, I don't know, just thinking about how much he and I were alike, how close I came to feeling like that and possibly doing something like that when I was in high school and college and I'm just glad that glad that my dad was there for me and gave me those tools early on I don't know where I'd be it <laughs> I don't know where I'd be today if he hadn't done that I'm just and thinking about the moto vloggers that took their lives man it's just no one should have to go through that So if there's anybody out there that is feeling depressed, is feeling like they've, I don't know, their shit's not happening for them, I don't know, and you need somebody to talk to, shoot me a PM. Like, just, if you've got nobody else, even if you do have other people and you just want to talk, chat me up. Um, I'm going to do other vlogs on the Uncaridian and possibly even walk through the entire book because I've got unique insight into it that um, would probably help quite a few people uh, break free of the chains of depression. But, um, yeah, before my bike cooks itself, I better get going back to work. And uh, oh, I might continue this again later. God, it's a hard topic. But I think the end will help people and I'll also bring out that um, program and instruction book from B.F. Skinner. Those two books, man, it's like the one-two punch for building a stronger self and um, taking back your brain. It's just, it, it's amazing. I, I couldn't possibly explain it to people unless they were one-on-one -on -one with me and going through it. It's totally worthwhile. So... See you guys next time, and I hope this uh, helps some people.